As we turn to uh, God's word for our encouragement on this Lord's Day, our scripture lesson, and also uh, the basis for Pastor Yarid's uh, men- message as we welcome him today is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter beginning at the sixth verse. It is read this morning by Margaret McConnell. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Good morning. God is good. All the time. I was greeted beautifully this morning by my friend Trish here with this same word. So a good reminder to do it again, all of us. God is good. All the time. time. Our God is good indeed. Uh, Many older uh, people in Ethiopia do not know their actual birthday. They know they, they, they they are there, they are alive, they are human beings, but they don't know when was they born. So they celebrate the new year as their own birthday. Uh, smart, right? Because they, need, they can't celebrate birthdays if they don't know when. So they use this opportunity of the new year. So you can imagine how people would be happy with uh, the new year. Um, and even myself, I came to know my birthday. Uh, Pastor Mark thought I, I am too old when I say this. Um, I came to know my birthday uh, because my father, my biological father, wrote it at the back of his Bible. It's a good place to write your birthday, right? <laughs> so we don't have like, you know, those days, uh, birth certificate. So my birth cer- certificate was uh, the witness of the Bible. So my birthday is written in the Bible. It is written. <laughs> it is written. So I really tease my friends when they say, you know, later uh, these certificates came or some don't have that certificate, I say, don't worry, mine is in a good place, you know, my birthday is recorded in a very safe place, which is the scripture. So I I enjoy that. Um, One of the most important things, when I think about uh, New Year celebration in my part of the world, where I came from, in Ethiopia particularly, is the new clothes, you know, dressing, outfit, Uh, children receive as a gift for the holiday. So that's very exciting. Even more than, you know, whatever this new year brings, the gift they receive makes them so excited. Uh, And we have even a saying, you know, which means uh, if the clothes doesn't or is not suitable for the holiday, it must go away, is, is, is direct translation. So, so the, the holiday is important when especially it comes with a nice, you know, outfit, clothes. But this morning, I'm not going to talk to you about really your Christmas gifts or New Year gifts or some other new stuff. We'll talk about the New Year itself. What is your plan for the new year, brothers and sisters? And God has one for you. Are we ready? Are we ready to listen to what he has for us as we just stepped into this new season in our life by his mercy? Even yesterday, some people died. The first day of the year. Could not make it to today. So we live in this awkward life journey that compels us to seriously consider almost every minute the Lord graciously provided for us. That's what the scripture, the gospel reading is all about. The owner of the fig tree could not find 
any fruit on the tree. So he came to the gardener and said, I came for three years, no fruit. When I was reminded by this gospel message as part of my sermon by my dear pastor, I asked myself, is the gospel reading really a gospel? Because it talks about, you know, cut it down, stuff like that. Do you want to hear that kind of message at the beginning of the year? I think there is a great deal of gospel in that reading. So the gardener suggested and actually told uh, the, the, sorry, the owner to the gardener to cut it down. But the gardener pleaded for mercy one more year. One more year. We hope and pray that you all live beyond 2022. That's my prayer for me and hopefully for all of us. God has still yet to do his work in us even beyond this year. But this gardener asked, you can see how intense was the situation. One more year, one more chance, one more season was the request. Like we see, you know, those exclusive focused requests from some of the biblical figures like Samson, this guy, giant. He was trapped in the hands of his enemies at the end of his life. He was in that place in jail, about to be done with life. But he asked one important question. Remember me once more. Remember me, O oh Lord, again. Strengthen me just for one more time. One more time, Lord, give me strength, was his prayer. That number one is very important in the Bible. And that's what King David also. One thing I ask the Lord, and that is what I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And to seek his face in his temple. That one thing. Sometimes I don't know why he is God, he is bigger than us. He tries to bring every universe, every world we claim to have into that one place and shrink us together so that we can focus on the main thing, so that the main thing to be the main thing. I think we are now confronted by that message this morning. We cannot have 50, 60 lives, 2022 lives. We have one life, and graciously we know that this new year, this one year, has been provided for us as we stepped into this new year, starting from yesterday. The question is, how do we align ourselves with the will of our gracious Heavenly Father as we walk into this Kairos moment? Especially, you know, these days are interesting days. You don't know what's happening. The world is wildly crazy. Things after things, even pandemic and variant after variant. Now, I, I, last night I read, you know, flu and, uh, and, and uh, COVID, they, they, at some place in the world, they merged together and, and create some kind of existence in people's body. And uh, believe me, they will come up with a name for that. <laughs> Crazy world. And this gardener, the gardener not only just pleaded for mercy, he also mentioned about a special responsibility, urgency that has to come with God's compassion. Of course, God is always compassion to give a chance for the tree. But God is also compassionate to be consistent with his word. He doesn't want to be inconsistent with mercy, yes, with judgment as well. So we hear 
these voices from the scripture and the gardener, one more year, one more year, and if not, it will be cut down. It is very intense. This year or never is the message. Now or never is the message. So, John the Baptist also had that strong message for his hearers. The axe is already at the root of the trees. Not good. I don't want that axe, you know, to follow me. I want his goodness to follow me all the days of my life. And that's what he wants for us. Not to be followed by these harsh, horrible things in our life. But the, that's the reality we cannot deny. That's why we need our God to protect us from the evil one out there. And Jesus announced the time has come. God takes notice of special moments and he exerts himself into those moments to show us his kindness. Even in the middle of the pandemic, God is not panicking in heaven. God is actively working on your behalf. So he comes to you. The time has come, Jesus said. The kingdom of God, the reign of God, the king himself with his power is here. He's not a distant God in which sometimes he might, you know, like slumber or fall asleep. He is active even here in our midst, and wants to talk to us about the next step in our life. This year, one more year, one more chance, one more season, the Lord has provided for his people. No more business as usual when we are surrounded by the voice of God, through the gospel, it's, it's unique, it's beautiful, and it is challenging. Because, it's, you know, Kronos, the Greek has this time concept, Kronos, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 22, 23, 24. It is not like that with God. He takes every moment of our life seriously, and he wants to help us to utilize and to redeem the time he has given to us, for us to redeem the Kronos with the Kairos, with his moment, so that his will be done in our life, and he will be pleased. And that's what St. Paul in Ephesians said, make the most of every opportunity, because the days are not good. We don't anticipate 22 would be nice to us. How come? Or, you know, we don't anticipate the, the rest of our, our lives to be always friendly to us. The world is, again, going wildly crazy and crazy and crazy and crazy. But God's people can be sheltered in the Kairos moment God created for you to overcome your evil days. So we, 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 we are not really, and our eternity is, is actually secured because we have that God who controls the universe and creation and the pandemic and the journey and the steps of every activity in this universe to make sure that his kingdom and his people will be kept safe and his glory continue to be proclaimed. So the king is here to help us. Are we aligning with him? Most importantly, the good news for us is God will visit our life and his people with unexpected provision and transformation in our life. He will change us. Really, it is not in our power to change the way we behave or the way we act even in the coming days and months. There is that God who is compassionate enough to impute, to give us his power to dwell in us so that we can act according to his will. 
He is there to change us. There is this season coming for you, a season of transformation, a year of revival for your life, for your family's life, for the life of the church. I have been watching that revival in this church. When I see new people, new people groups coming, joining, and people are having good time in this church, I see the kingdom of God actively working, St. Andrew Lutheran Church. And the kids love this church, my kids. Especially, you know, one of them is sitting in my office now. He came early morning, and I said, you're not going to be part of the three services. What a, I want to be in church. And he is waiting for the 11 o'clock service. He came early just to hang out here. He loves even the smell of St. Andrew. And, of course, the people. Because we have Jesus here. Most important gift for all of us. So, friends... There is that special visitation from God for us. He will dig around that tree and he will do everything possible to make sure that the tree will produce good fruit and the owner will be honored. God will do. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. That's what the apostle says, Paul says. And Furthermore, the Lord's people, we will enjoy a unique season of favor, consecration, dedication, and fellowship with our God. That one thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. In that one year, if you have to do something, if you have to do that one thing, that would be to have a wonderful fellowship with your God. This is your season, St. Andrew. This is our season to align with our loving God. He is extending his arms to embrace us even this year and beyond. He, Leviticus 19.24 says, very important verse for the gospel reading. In the fourth year, all the fruits of the land will be holy. God will make the fruits of the land, the trees of the land, holy because he proclaimed, because he said so. Yes, the three years are gone in vain, but the fourth year is for you. It will start to produce fruit because it is declared, and I hope we will respond with obedience because God is actively there to bless you, to bless you, to bless you, to bless us. He doesn't have to force us to be blessed. Let us just stretch our arms and receive what he has in store for us. Amazing, amazing blessings in the spiritual realms. That's what the Apostle Paul. Hirut Bakkala is one of the secular singers in Ethiopia. And uh, she came to the Lord at the later age of her life. And she was giving testimony in church in South Ethiopia. And uh, she was saying, how God mercifully saved my life, forgiven my sins. And now I have some responsibility. That one more year, that one more chance to glorify his name in what I do. And she said, even though I have only one minute left in this side of heaven, that one minute will be dedicated for my savior, was her testimony. I was there as part of the music team playing guitar for her when she sings. Her testimony challenged me. The place where we were standing, singing with her, is a place a few years back could have been my and my folks' burial site because there was, there was a, a, a bad terrorist attack in that place that we missed and we were you know, rescued by God's mercy just by one day. We were supposed to go through that road, like yesterday, and we said, maybe let's do it tomorrow, and that yesterday, people were slaughtered like animals. So I was standing after some years in that same spot, listening to this singer, one minute I am left with, and that is dedicated to the Lord, and I said, oh Lord, maybe you might have given me more than one minute. 
I will, I will, I will, by your grace, dedicate. And that's one of the driving forces for me to hang out with Jesus and serve even with you guys here. I, he, I know he loves me. He protected me many times. How can I step away from that love? I want to do it even more. And I think the Lord would help us to do it. In conclusion, God invites us for a close relationship with him. That number one, one year, signifies closeness, unity, uniqueness. So God wants to surround us with that single-minded devotion for his name. He wants that from, from, from us. And he wants us to be also in harmony, in peace with other people. The fig tree gave hard time to the soil, you remember? But the time is changed now. So she will be friendly. The tree will be friendly to the soil. Creation will also be blessed when God's people are in harmony with their Savior and with one another. And I hope and pray, I don't know, this unnecessary hatred and fightings among people and uh, creation will subsidize and hopefully one day will be eradicated totally. But this year will be the year of love, embracing, encouraging one another. And let us make use of every opportunity to serve and grow spiritually in this place. The fertilizers are there. Thank you, great pastors, feeding us with the fertilizers of the gospel. Don't miss the rain. Don't miss the river. Don't miss the season because it is there for you. And he wants us to do something significant through you. He wants you to join his mission. You have no mission. I have no mission. My mission is to join his mission. Your mission is to join his mission to save and help humanity. So the Lord is here with a bright future for us, not because the days are good, but he is good. God is good all the time. Have a blessed new year, and may the good Lord continue to watch over you and continue to bless you. In Jesus' name, and the people of God say, Amen. Oh
As we close today, I invite you to join me in the prayer that our Heavenly Father has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for tuning in to Word and Song today. I pray a wonderful blessing on your day and your life during this holiday and Christmas season.